Good morning, lovelies. Zoe Two Dots here with some more Pokemon Go goodness for you. And today, it's got a bit of a spicy little news announcement for you and a couple of strange eggs. They hatched while I was away camping. I was away this last weekend camping. Uh, terrible weather, really bad weather until like the last day. I think that's kind of like tradition or like the camping curse. Uh, but we, we were actually staying like an extra day than most. So everyone like left on the Sunday because you know they're getting back to work on Monday. We were like, let's stay another day. The sun came out. We finally got some sun. Made it, made it worth it. Good time to catch up with friends as well, which was really, really nice. This was the camping trip that was uh, supposed to be like around my birthday in April. And then, you know, this year happened. So it was good to, to finally catch up with peeps. But before we jump into any of that, I just wanted to let you guys know that for this whole month, we're running a bunch of really cool promos uh, over on my merch website. So crabmay.com forward slash Zoe Two Dots. Link will be in the description for this video. But uh, every single weekend leading up to Black Friday, there's gonna be different sales on different products. So this weekend coming up is gonna be accessories. We've got a whole bunch of accessories, the laptop cases, water bottles, things like that. Pins are gonna be on sale very, very soon. Too. The following weekend, we're going to have 25% off shirts. And then finally, right at the end of the month, from the 23rd of November all the way through to the end of the month, we're going to have a massive, massive sale on everything. Everything store wide, big sale happening for Black Friday. Like, not even the Friday, we're just going to like do it as a whole week. Stuff the Friday. This year's been an absolute write off, so let's. Uh, write off some discounts for you. That doesn't make any sense, but hey, you save money and that's great. So again, link will be in the description for those ones. Whole bunch of stuff to snag and, 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 some spicy new merch uh, for pre-order will be dropping on Black Friday as well. So keep your eyes peeped. We're looking at doing a lot of, uh, a lot more kind of fun and creative stuff for some upcoming merch. So stay tuned, eyes peeped, Black Friday new stuff plus just sales. So winner, winner. Now Pokemon Go has just announced a new event called the City Spotlight. But before we get into that, some eggs, if you please. Now, I said this, I said this when this happened as well. And we kind of like, we've been over kind of like, you know, the ups and downs of the 12K eggs, the strange eggs, my thoughts and feelings on them so far have been pretty mixed. I don't think they're the greatest thing. I don't think they're the worst thing. They're just a thing that's there. I also said as well, hey, save your incubators, save your you know rocket radars and stuff, and you know let the creators take the financial hit of buying incubators, buying the passes, trying it out, and showing you guys, uh, you know what the rates are like. With that being said, <laughs> how would you guys like to see what I hatched from uh, eight 12-kilometer eggs while I was away camping this weekend? First egg, Dino. Not bad, not bad you're thinking. Like, you're like, that's that's not the worst thing ever. I've, I've seen worse hatches. Happy with that. Cheeky little appraisal, it's not the great, I'll probably trade it, that's fine. I've got my lucky one from a trade, so I'm happy. Egg number two. Now, the only one that I need at the moment is sand isle. That's not a sand isle. <laughs> that's a trubbish. And not a particularly spicy trubbish. It's okay, it's fine, it is what it is, we move on. As they say, we, we just keep pressing forward. I Here's the thing, right? I'm trapped in this in this quagmire. I need Sandile for the Pokédex. Well, need, I would like Sandile for the Pokédex. That's a lava tile. But like, where do I draw the line for going ham for 12k eggs? This is my third batch. Third batch of 12k eggs. I've had a decent spread of Ponyard and Vullaby, the new other additions. Speaking of Vullaby, that is one. You can clearly see as well here, I've got more than enough candies to evolve, but basically two or three of them at this point when this, uh, like, like can easily evolve two if I wanted to. I don't want to, but I could. Which leaves me with this just like, I just want that little sandy. I want that sand up. Pause, pause replay. I have a newfound fondness for sand isle, brought about by the Crown Tundra, because I've been playing the Crown Tundra as the Crown Thundra from Down Under. Crown Tundra from Down, Thunder from Down Under. The whole team has been Aussie themed. Sand Isle is stupid cute. Its animation is really, really cute. I haven't seen it in Pokemon Go as a buddy yet, so I don't know if it still has this cute little thing. I hope so. I would like to see so. So now I'm stuck. Anyway, res resume play. Pornyard. Lovely. Again, not the greatest IVs. I will probably trade it. But a newie, a new one nonetheless. Another Trubbish. 
Now, if you're if you're a clever little egg, you might be sensing where this where this is going. Another trubbish. Wowie, I sure do love that much more trubbish. Isn't that great? We've got another egg though. We could we could could bring it in the home stretch with another the trubbish. Not a new Pokédex <laughs> entry, and not the sand isle that we that we desire, that we need slash want. So that was four out of eight eggs as Trubbish. And only two out of the eight eggs as something new introduced in the Strange Eggs. And sadly, if I confer with the Silph Road, it looks like Sandile is hatching at a rate of 2.1%, which is rough. <laughs> That's really bloody rough, especially considering Sandile is the one of the new Pokemon that has a three-stage evolution. The rest are two-stage, so Ponyard and Valibi have, you know, burst themselves and then one extra evolution. Uh, Sandile is one of three which is kind of rough because even if you hatch one, like you're not going to hatch it with enough candy to evolve that one all the way. You might not want to evolve, or you might have one of each, going for a living dex, whatever it might be. It's pretty rough. According to the Sylph data as well, Vullaby is hatching slightly at a slightly higher percentage than Trubbish, but you wouldn't know it from looking at my account. <laughs> it is definitely the one that I've seen the most of other than Trubbish though. Vullaby, I think I'm seeing on four Vullaby at the moment. Trubbish, I'm sitting on too many Trubbish. So I'm left in this spot. I think I might do one last full batch of 12Ks and then after that, I'm really not going to be like hunting them down. I might just end up trading for a sand isle if a friend gets super, super lucky or whatever it might be. I'm someone who likes hatching eggs, but I, I like it when it's, you know, if this whole pool is like spicy, if we just like remove the trubbish, remove the trubbish, the rest is fine. The rest is fine. Give it a trubbish out. Yummy. You know I and spread that 17% that of Trubbish across the other things. At least that way it feels like you're actually hunting for something, not just like, well, what am I gonna eat this time? But anyway, I just thought you guys should know how those eggs turned out. Let's jump across to the City Spotlight event. It's gonna be happening on the 22nd of, of November in four select cities. Now it says in the post here that Niantic has been working closely with the local health authorities for these areas to make sure that this is an event that can be done safely. Uh, and it's not, you know, like a, a go fest or something where everyone's meeting in one park or things like that. It seems to be like one of those city-wide kind of spotlight feature events. Uh, similar probably to what we were gonna be expecting. I uh, had, you know, the St. Louis and all those safari zones gone ahead. There was, you know, that city explorer pass, which was highlighting raids at certain places, highlighting certain key locations, that kind of thing. It's not really like that specific for this, but just that general get out and explore your neighborhood kind of vibe if you live in these four specific neighborhoods. <laughs> so shout out to the countries who had, you know, the whole pandemic and quarantine thing on lockdown, because it's very clear that those are the countries that are reaping the rewards and getting these benefits. So on Sunday, the 22nd of November from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. local time, if you are in one of these four cities, there's gonna be a free event and a paid ticketed event that you can participate in. Those cities are Tainan in Taiwan, Auckland in New Zealand, Busan in South Korea, and Kyoto, Japan. So congrats, thumbs up, you did good. Uh, I mean, like what, Taiwan hasn't had a case of the virus since what? Like you guys smashed it out of the park in like May, June or something ridiculous. Taiwan's like back to regular life. I'm very jealous of Pierre's videos. <laughs> He's having a good time, him and Megan. Slightly sad that there isn't an Australian city featured here, but I do understand that we're not quite too like perfect. We've done very, very well. There's been no community transmission uh, cases in the Hunter region where I live or the greater Hunter region where I live for over two months, which is fantastic. I think it would've been a cool opportunity to highlight a smaller city in our region, like somewhere Central Coast or Newcastle, things like that would've been really, really cool. But I do understand that there are still uh, people quarantining in Sydney and things like that. Maybe it's just not a great look at the time. Who knows? But congrats to these four cities. Here's what you can expect. For the free components, uh, it is highlighted here that you and your buddy can enjoy a little bit of timed research. You can take photos of Pokemon to earn encounters, to earn a Poffin, some Stardust, and a Lucky Egg. You can spin Pokestops to receive a gift sticker, so it's probably be themed for the event. So I'm really curious to see what this looks like if you're on my friends list and you get one. I'd love to see it. You can take part in an AR uh, Pokestop scanning competition. 
we'll come back to this in a little bit, but the uh, you'll be competing against the other cities in who can do the most quests for scanning Pokestops. And the city with the most Pokestops scanned uh, at the end of the event will receive a exclusive bonus afterwards for quarter hatch distance. Additionally, there'll be special rewards for completing AR Pokestop scans. Again, we'll come back to this. For the ticketed component of the event, and this will cost trainers $5 USD or the equivalent, so like $20 million yeah, Australian or New Zealand dollars basically is the conversion rate at the moment. So around like $7 uh, in, New in New Zealand in, in Kiwi bucks, in Fush and Chup money. Uh, not sure of the conversions for Taiwan and Korea and all that, but $5 US equivalent. The paid ticket will include everything in the free experience plus these following bonuses. So incense will attract Onyx, Lapras, Unknown Sea, Nosepass, Rhyhorn, Doduo, Mantine, Pidgey, Pelipper, Pidgeot, and Stoutland. And if you're lucky, you might even encounter Shiny Unknown Sea. So one of the unknowns is gonna be popping about Shiny, one that we haven't seen before as a Shiny of the unknowns. They seem to be like kind of, I guess, drip feeding the Shinies out through different events. Quite a few evolved forms in there as well with, you know, the Stoutland and the Pidgeot. So a nice bit of Stardust if they are spawning, you know, relatively frequently off the incense. Um, so thumbs up for the star piece on that. There will be additional special research for the paid component. So the time work research is the free bit. The special research, uh, special research is ones that like uh, the research that don't disappear after the event is done. Special research is like always in that last tab on your research tab. <laughs> Complete it to receive a poffin, an incense, a super incubator, three lucky eggs, a lure module, an encounter with Lapras, EXP, and Stardust. So it seems like they're being pretty upfront about exactly what is in the, the rewards here. They don't specify, you know, the Stardust or the XP amount, but it seems like they're being pretty specific with the quantities of rewards. So you know what you're getting for your money. It's not like, do it and find out. So it, I like the transparency. You can earn up to three extra buddy hearts uh, with your buddy in each category. So for example, it's normally, you know, pat your buddy once a day, you get one heart. There'll be three extra uh, for that activity by the looks of it. If you give your buddy any treats during this event with the paid ticket, your buddy will immediately become excited. Now, excited mode, um, maybe a lot of people haven't seen that. Uh, it's when you're like, your buddy is just Generally, once it's on the map and it's fed, it's in a normal, you know, content state. And if you do a certain number of interactions or objectives, um, for example, battling, feeding, walking, all within a certain time frame, you earn points towards it being excited mode. Uh, it changes to being like a super stoked little emoji on its little icon. And that's when you're gonna see the bonus heart effect where you can earn double hearts per day. Uh, if your buddy is excited. So it's saying here, if you've got the ticket for the event, your buddy will be automatically excited once it is fed. Now, if you are someone participating in this, it might be a great way to like grind out some extra buddy levels. If you're gonna be walking around, playing with your buddy, battling with your buddy, feeding it. If you can earn these like triple hearts, plus it's auto excited, like this would be the day, if you've got the time to do it, to be swapping out a couple of buddies, uh, you know, have your first buddy, get it stoked, get a bunch of hearts, swap to the next one you're working on for you know the next couple of hours and so on to really maximize that. You'll also have quarter hatch distance for the duration for anything placed inside an incubator once the event has started. So don't incubate beforehand once the event has started. And then incense will be more effective for the duration of the event while you are walking and they will last for two hours. So the incense will last for two hours and be more effective when walking. So that's that. Congrats to the cities that have, you know, I guess unlocked. <laughs> the privilege of this event. It's really, really cool to see. Uh, I'm really curious to see how it goes and to see how this can, you know, I guess, evolve into future events, you know, when things are a bit more back to normal. Of course, we'll have to work towards, you know, working towards normal to get there and to see what other cities could be included in the future as, you know, more countries have been, you know, doing a really, really good job and getting things under control. Quickly, however, back to the AR mapping and scanning component of this event. Niantic still hasn't clarified or made a statement about what they're doing with the AR scanning data. I personally have not done a single AR scanning task because I don't know where it goes. I don't know what they're doing with it. I don't know what the goal for it is. Um, is it just so to have a cool interactive feature for Pokemon Go? Is it to make a secret stealth AR map of the world with which they will take over the Mwahaha? Like we don't know, basically. Um, and I think that transparency is something that's really important from a company. So basically uh, what I do to not have my game spaz out and give me a 
billion AR mapping tasks is I hang on to one mapping task uh, and it stacks and stays there. And then that means every other time you spin what would be an AR mapping task, you don't get it because that first one blocks the rest of them. So just keep one, don't delete it. And it will prevent you from picking up more or prevent you from not being able to pick up a regular task from other stops. But I think it's really weird to see them pushing more of like, hey, get out there and scan pokey stops when they haven't you know, been transparent with what they're doing with that data and information. Uh, and I think that's kind of important, especially when the community wants to know. It, again, if it's something as simple as you guys are free labor and we're just trying to make an AI map of the world, fine, but just let us know that. Um, because at the moment, uh, there's no way that I'm looking like an absolute goose walking around a kid's playground doing this, like getting all angles for like one revive. That's not really incentive to me to do that just to make, uh, you know, make it, make someone else's, I don't know, wonderful map of the world easier. I think it needs to be a bit spicier than that. Uh, also, I wanna know where it goes. I wanna know where it goes. So, you know, maybe you guys don't care. Let me know if you do or don't care about that in the comments down below. Quick little PSA as well. I will be away again this weekend. I know, crazy, two weekends in a row. Uh, I will maybe be back in time for the comm day more than likely I might be able to play a little bit, you know, in the car on the drive home, not me driving, someone else driving, Alan driving, but I may not be able to like film slash like stream, live stream for it. Uh, there are plenty of other wonderful Aussies who, uh, you know, I know ProPlanty usually streams the events from the get, so be sure to check out his channel. Uh, Cricket as well will be making videos, no doubt. And I'll be doing a bunch of stuff this week uh, before I do go away. And if I'm, in, if I'm never not uploading here, be sure to come and hang out on Twitch as well. We do a bunch of live streaming over there. The uh, Little Cup has started as well in PvP, which I'm keen to try that out. It's my little baby boys, you know, duking it out, which I love. So come hang out on Twitch as well. Also, oh my God, so many PSAs. I've pre-ordered some Pokemon cards, some, some Vivid Voltage cards to open. But are there other decks, boxes, boosters you guys would like to see? Are there particular ones that you think have just got like the spiciest cards at the moment you'd like to see me bust those bad boys open? Let me know if there's particular sets that you recommend. It's been a long time since I've like been actively collecting Pokemon cards. Uh, so any tips or recommendations are much appreciated. But as always, lovelies, thank you so, so much for watching. If you are new, please be sure to subscribe. Thank you to everyone who did leave a like as well. And if you'd like additional ways to support the channel, links for Patreon and the merch are in the description down below. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful morning, noon, night, whatever time it is for you. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.